If you're just starting to learn how to code online, it can be kind of overwhelming figuring out where to start when it comes to coding. But if you're just a beginner, most beginners just need to know these few basic concepts when starting to learn how to code. The concepts that I'm going to go over in this video are very beginner and very foundational. And so they're going to be found in basically every programming language. And every programmer, when they started off in their programming journey, they've learned these programming concepts. And so these concepts are really important, really key and really powerful. And you need to know these concepts in order to build some really nice programming projects when you're starting off. So my name's Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the foundations of software development. So let's get started. By the way, if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, I've got a special gift for you. It's called my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a guide that will take you from no coding experience to building your first four projects. And the best part is it's free. It's a free gift to you. In this coding challenge, I guide you in 30 days to build four programming projects and I give you some tutorials that are in C. But of course, these projects are really generic and really beginner friendly. And so you can actually code them in different programming languages. You can still benefit from this guide because you can just take the principles that are in my challenge and then apply them to your programming language. You can find the challenge in the link in the description. And if you download it and pay attention to what it says, you'll definitely learn some fundamental programming concepts that will give you a good foundation to your software development journey. All right, so the first programming concept that you need to know is data types. So we have a program here called programmingbasics.c and here we have different variables in our program and these, these variables here are just data. You can just think of them as data and every program has data. They need to take in some data, do some processing on the data and so this is how we store data in our program. And in order for the computer to do something meaningful with the data, it needs to know what kind of data it's dealing with. The thing about computers is that in the memory of a computer, it's just ones and zeros. And so it doesn't have any meaning for any of the data that it has. And so in order to do any sort of meaningful processing, we need to tell the computer what kind of data that data is. And so that's what a data type is really in a nutshell. So for example, with this variable here, this is an integer variable. And so whenever the program is going to do any sort of mathematical operation on this variable, it's going to know that this is an integer. And so you can do um, integer mathematical operations on it. But say for this one right here, this is a char variable or a character. If you try to do some mathematical operation on this variable here, the computer is going to be confused because it knows that this is not actually a number. Even if you put the number six here and then you save it, the computer is still going to treat this as if it's just a character. It's not going to treat it like a number. If you want the computer to treat this variable here like a number, then you have to change the data type here to int or to float or to double. And so those are the only data types that allow the computer to know that this is actually not a character is actually a number. All right, so let's just run this program and see what happens. So here we have variables and we assign values to those variables. And then we're just going to print the values and display them on the screen. So let's run this. Okay, there you go. So integers 42, float is 3.14, right? Like, like it says up here, double is this long uh, sequence of numbers and the character is C and then string says hello C programming. Now, before I go to the next concept, I just want to make a brief statement here that this is why I recommend that beginners learn C first over Python, because in C, you have to be really mindful about the data types of your variables. In Python, you can get away with declaring variables and not actually assigning a type to them. And you can actually even change the, the variable type within the program. And so if you learn how to program with that kind of flexibility when it comes to the variable types, then that lead can lead to some bad coding practices and lead to bugs that will be hard to find later on. All right, now the second basic concept that every beginner programmer needs to learn, and that is user input. Programs are really boring unless the user can interact with the program and give some sort of input, whether it be controlling a character on the screen or inputting some data like your name. And so this was actually one of the first things that I learned in university, how to input my name. All right, so I changed the program to ask me for my name and then just say hello to me. So let's run this. And then my name is Henrik. And then there you go. Hello, Henrik. So now this program actually can say my name. So that's pretty cool. 
Once you know how to collect user input from a user, you can build all kinds of programs. For example, you can build a tip calculator. And in that tip calculator, you can ask the user for the bill and the percent tip that they want to calculate. And then you can do the calculation for the user. You can also start to build some simple games, like a guess the number game where your program generates a random number and then asks the user to guess the number. And these, these two projects that I just mentioned are some examples of projects in my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And so if you want to, like I mentioned earlier, if you want to start your own programming projects and have a free guide, you can download that in the link in the description. All right, so I put in a menu selection here and the user can order the selection by number. And I know these, these options are kind of boring, but here we have pizza, cheeseburger, and hot dog. And so the user can just put in a number to order one of these choices. And then we'll just tell the user here what option they ordered. So let's try running this. Henrik. And then let's order a pizza. So one. Okay, it says, hello, Henrik, you ordered option one. All right, now the third basic concept, which is control flow fundamentals. And these fundamentals are just ways of how you can control the flow of your program. So this would include stuff like your while loops, your for loops, if and else statements, and all of these different statements, all of these different loops control how your program flows. So for this part right here, instead of saying you ordered option one or you ordered option two, which is kind of boring, we can actually say that the actual choice that the user ordered. And so we do this by using an if and else statement with the variable my int. So if my int is one, then we'll say you ordered a pizza. Or if my int is two, then we'll say you ordered a cheeseburger. Or my int is three, then we'll say you ordered a hot dog. So that will make the program more interesting and more fun to use. All right, so here we have some if and else if statements. And so the program is going to flow into this code block here if the user selected one. If it, the user selected two, then it's not gonna go in this section of code here, it's gonna go in this one. And so let's run this program and see how it works. My name is Henrik and I choose one. And then it says, hello Henrik, you ordered a pizza. All right, let's do it again and let's order number two. So my name is Henrik and order two. And he hello Henrik, you ordered a cheeseburger. Now let's say, what if we give it an invalid choice like we say four? And then it's gonna say, you didn't give a valid selection because I put an else statement here that if the user didn't select any of these numbers, it's gonna say this sentence over here. All right, now let's add a loop so that the user can order more than just one item. All right, so I put in a while loop here that will keep asking the user for the menu selection, but then when the user inputs zero, then we'll exit the while loop. And then as the user's inputting some orders, then we're going to have this my double variable, which was a decimal number, and this will be act as like the bill for the, the user. And so when the user orders a pizza, we're gonna increment the bill by 9.99 to add that to the bill. And then same with the cheeseburger and the hot dog. And then at the end, when the user's done ordering, we're gonna say the user's name and then the bill of the, of the user. So let's run that. Okay, your name is Henrik. And then order a pizza. And so he says, you ordered a pizza, your bill so far is 9.99, we order another pizza. Now it's 1998 and now we order a cheeseburger and now your bill so far is 24.97 and then let's add a hot dog and your bill so far is 27.96 and then zero to exit. And so your bill is 27.96. Oh, I should have put the dollar sign here. All right, the fourth basic concept that all beginners should learn are functions or methods. And so in this program, we are actually, we're actually calling a lot of functions already like this printf or this scanf. And so these are functions that are from the standard library here. And so you have to learn how to use functions from other libraries and you just include the library here and you can use a lot of different kinds of functions, but you can also create your own function. So here I created a function called show menu and it's just going to print the menu, the pizza, the cheeseburger, hot dog, and the prices. And then in my program, I call the function here. And so, 
This is really important for beginners because it really helps organize your code. So now I don't have all my code inside this main function. I can split up my code into other functions and actually I could even include these functions in different files too. And so that's the start of adding more complexity to your programs. So you can start building some really cool programs just from these beginner concepts alone. Another cool thing about creating your own functions like this one is that you can actually build unit tests for your fun for your program. So if your program has a lot of functionality in it and you want to be able to test the functionality over time, then you can create unit tests. And these are just tests to test only certain functions of your program and verify if that function is outputting the correct results. And so that can help a lot when you're developing and make sure that your program still works as you're adding new features to it. So let's just run the final program. And then your name is Henrik, or sorry, my name is Henrik. And then one for the pizza, and then three for the hot dog, and then zero to finish. And so Henrik, your final bill is $12.98. Our last thing I'll say before I end the video is that if you're a beginner, you really need to focus on building console applications. And a console application is a, an application or a program that runs inside a console like this terminal. And so this is a really good example of a program or like a console application and because it's really simple and really focuses more on the actual coding itself. And this is something that all beginners have done in the past and all the beginners that I've coached, even me as a beginner, these are the first kinds of programs that I built for my classes from my university. So before you start working on GUI applications or applications that have a user interface, focus first on these console applications, make sure you have the basics down, and then you can start worrying about programs or, com or applications that have like a front end or a user interface component to it. If you learn how to build these kinds of programs here, like these really simple ones here, then you'll be able to learn how to debug your code, how to make your code more complex. And this, this already has some sort of basic user interface here with this printfs here. Um, but you can start to build a lot of cool applications already and just get into the habit of coding. And these are all really important foundations to have as a beginner. All right, that's it for this week's video. I taught you some beginner programming concepts that every beginner programmer needs to learn. Of course, I didn't teach you everything in this video. I just taught you some basic high level overview of these concepts. So those concepts are, first of all, our data types. Second is going to be user input. Third is control flow fundamentals. And then fourth are functions and methods. And you wanna start building these or start using these beginner programming concepts in your console applications. All right, like I mentioned earlier, if you're just starting off in your programming journey and you don't know where to start, you can download my 30 day beginner coding challenge. And it's a 30 day guide where I teach you how to build those four beginner programming projects. It's really beginner friendly and I go step by step on how to build each one and I go through the tutorials that you need to build each one. So download that in the link in the description. All right, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate you and I hope you got some value from this video. And if you did, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you have any other questions on what beginner programmers should know, please let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer you there and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.